Hey everybody, how's it going today? I hope everybody's having a wonderful, blessed day today. Today I want to do a subject called, Do I Believe Visually Impaired People Have a Hard Time Making Friends? Do I Believe Visually Impaired People Have a Hard Time Making Friends? The reason why I did this subject, um, you know, I've watched some uh, people on YouTube with visually impaired problems like myself and, um, you know, they were uh, sharing their experiences, you know, like how it's hard for them to make friends. And I do agree on so many ways because, you know, it seems like, you know, when you become an adult, right? You know, you get out of high school, you get out of college. I mean, you got all those years behind you. Now you're, what, 25 up? It does seem like it makes it hard for you to make friends unless you still have that uh, strong connection with your high school friends or your college friends, you know, still kick it ever so often, but making new friends as a visually impaired person, I mean, it could be rather challenging. The reason why I say that is because, you know, it just seems like if you can't drive yourself to and from places, you know, when you find a true friend, they don't mind come, coming to pick you up and take you to their place so you can hang out with them or pick you up and um, take you to their social events. You know, that's a blessing when you have somebody like that. You see where I come from. It's a blessing when you have a friend like that. But it seems like, you know, it's very hard to find these days, okay? See, and also, too, let me make this point right here. Um, it seems like the only way for you to make friends, I'm just coming at it with my point of view here, okay? It seems like the only way for you to make friends is like you going to the bars or clubs. Is that correct? See, if you're not a part of that lifestyle, it does make it hard to make friends, okay? <clears throat> See, most places don't have good social events without alcohol, okay? If you're not a fan of getting drunk and partying, you know, you don't see very sober events. You get where I come from, right? It just seems like the only way to have a social event is by you know, having drugs and alcohol, that makes sense to you, okay? I mean, I just say what I have seen over the years, okay? Now, let me just say this. You know, visually impaired people oftentimes do have a hard time having a social life because if you're in a room full of people, you know, this help you know, people that has real good vision to understand what I'm saying. If you're in a room full of people, somebody's like about maybe like 50 feet or less or maybe more, if they're waving at you and they want you to come over, you won't see them. <clears throat> and that will oftentimes make that person be like, that person right there is such a jerk. They didn't wave back to me. Why didn't you wave for? Let's say it like this. I, sometimes, you know, like with me, you know, I can see somebody going down the road, but I can't see the person, go, you know, sitting in the car, okay, you know, because they're going down the road. If somebody was like this waving at me, they'll think that I'm a stuck-up snob, okay? It's our cut from it. So the point I'm making. See, in situations like that, if you really want to talk to that person, you know, it's good to just walk over there and just say, hey, how you doing? How's your day going? You know, just, uh, you know, strike up a little small talk. But if somebody's interested in talking to you, they will keep the conversation flowing. But if they're not, they'll just keep a step and it's good doing, okay? That's all I mean, right? Because all the times when you're in a room full of people, it's you know, it's hard to be like, you know, but some folks with good vision, they can be able to spot out certain people and see who's who, see who's what. And so, I mean, you see their facial expression is that they're, you know, cues for you to come over or they won't need to come over there and speak to them. You see what I mean, right? You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> see, when I was uh, watching some, uh, you know, people that's uh, visually impaired like myself on YouTube, you know, the YouTubers are visually impaired. You know, it does uh, feel pretty good to, you know, have, you know, listen to some people that relate to you. So I come from, it does help you. See, I want to say this, you know, it just seems like there's not very many, you know, Christian YouTubers. You know, the reason why I say Christian YouTubers because you got to have a format for, for your channel, okay? That's basically what you be formed as, okay? But the truth is, it's not by calling yourself a Christian that saved you. It's by being a child of God. That what makes you a child of God, okay? Anybody call themselves a Christian all day long, just hear themselves talk, if that makes sense to you. But there's not very many, <clears throat> you know, people, you know, within the, you know, 
visit impaired community on YouTube talking about, you know, being a child of God, you get rock up from. I mean, I just seem to be like one out of a million that you get rock up from, right? But see the thing is too, I want to bring this point up right here too. You know, it seems like, you know, sometimes some people, that's not out of love, okay? It's no disrespect. It's something for you to think about, okay? You know, sometimes, you know, when some people see a visually impaired person walking around, you know, they want to go over there and say, hey, don't you know that God can heal you sight today? They want to start praying for you. You see what I mean? Instead of just wanting to talk to you, see how you are, just learn about you. You got to work up from, it's nothing wrong praying. I'm not against that. I, mean, I love praying. I pray for myself. You know what I mean? See, what's, what's the use of, you know, praying for somebody they're not going to pray for themselves, okay? It's about like, Handing me some water and I don't drink it. You see what I mean? It's about like handing me some water and I don't drink it, right? See my point? But I'm just saying. <clears throat> yeah, praying is good. Nothing wrong with that. But some people want more than just prayer. Some people want a good friend. You know what I mean? You know, when you find a good friend as a visually impaired person that accepts you for who you are, that's a wonderful thing. You know, I say this, you know, as I said before, you know, what it's like being a visually impaired person video, you know, visually impaired man, you know, oftentimes when you're visually impaired, you know, is when you see the true colors of professor Christians. I'm saying all of them, okay? I'm not saying that one bit. I'm just being honest. You know, it just seems like, you know, that it's going to flock with, you know, who's got good vision, okay? So I come from, they don't want to, have to take out time to help somebody see something or read something or, you know, that some people they can't even see at all, okay? Some people have to use a cane, okay? You know, they don't want to make time to help that person out, okay? It's where I come from, right? Because they got so used to being with people that's, you know, pretty good sighted like they are. It's where I come from, right? See, me, though, me as a visually impaired man, I mean, I'm thankful I could do what I need to do. I mean, I could mow the yard with my John Deere riding lawnmower. I mean, I just pray it's God that didn't let the uh, visually impaired man confine me, okay? That's all I mean. But it's, you know, it's all in the person's attitude. That's all I mean. But like I say, it is hard for a <clears throat> visually impaired person in general. I was going to say visually impaired men, but you have visually impaired women also. But I make mistakes in my videos and I correct myself. I just talk to you like I'm talking to you a person, okay? Now, you know, it does seem like it's harder for visually impaired people to make friends because oftentimes, you know, you just see the true colors of, you know, of people, right? You so, I mean, you just see the true colors of people. When you find somebody that wants to be your friend, though you're not you know, you don't have perfect eyesight as they have. That's a wonderful thing because, you know, you found a true friend right there. It's our comfort because, you know, when you're helping somebody out and you're helping them out, I mean, they just make some people, to be honest, some people, when they see somebody with a visually impaired problem or somebody's disabled in any way, shape, or form, it's like they just want to stick some of those people off in their own little corner in their own little world somewhere and forget about who they are. You see what I mean? And not take the time to get to know them. You see what I mean? Not say it with everybody. I'd be, be foolish to say that. Now, <clears throat> I will say this, though. For a visually impaired man, right? I mean, I just, that's, I put the shoe over here for a moment. But I was uh, being honest. For a visually impaired man, you know, that's what I love about uh, watching some of these uh, YouTubers that's uh, visually impaired like I am because I do bring out some real good valid points. See, for a Christian, for, for a Christian man or a, or a visually impaired man in general, right? It is more harder for a man to find a date, right? It is for, more harder for, for a man to find a wife because in today's society, it's pretty much taught that men drive the women around, okay? It's not women drive men around, it's men drive the women around. So I mean, right? See, if a man don't have a car, in a woman's eyes, he's worthless. Is that a little bit too strong? I mean, it's being honest. I mean, some people on an honest YouTuber gives some real good honest points of viewpoints. And when somebody hands them the honest points, they just can't take the truth. I mean, I'm just being honest here. I mean, this, this, this is the oppression that I get, okay? It's not saying anything bad or anything. It's the oppression that I get. 
So I mean, right? I mean, it could it could it could go like for finding friends, right? They could go down the same uh, territory. They could be down the same turf. You know, like if you don't have friends, I mean, not sorry. If you can't drive, people don't want to, you know, be your friend because you can't drive. See, to be honest with you, it's not about the vehicle, right? It's about the person in the vehicle, okay? So I mean, see, when you find, say, like a like if a guy finds a wife. That accepts him for the fact that he's not able to see his purpose as she does. And he's found something more valuable than his hobbies he ever found on, has on this earth, okay? So I mean, because she accepts him for who he is, despite that he has uh, some vision problems, okay? He don't have perfect eyes as she has. Uh, you see what I mean, right? You know, the same rule applies with the friends, okay? When you have some friends that accept you for who you are, Though you don't have purple eyes that they have, you found something more valuable than any hobby you could work on, okay? So, I mean, see, I could buy things all day on eBay <clears throat> and work on things a lot, enjoy my hobbies, right? I mean, do anything I want to. But <clears throat> finding a friend, finding a spouse, I mean, finding a wife be hard. You know, like for some visually impaired women, they could have a hard time finding themselves a husband. It's hard to come from, right? So, I mean, but the thing of it is, you know, when you stop and talk about these subjects, you really learn a whole lot, okay? So, I mean, see, if I wasn't, you know, if I didn't never was born with a disability or never had a, a visually impaired problem, I wouldn't be bringing the subject up, okay? I wouldn't know what it's like. I'd be just like anybody else. I'd just drive myself places, go on places, doing as I please, right? See, one thing that being vision impaired taught me is be grateful that I'm able to see something in life, okay? Be grateful that I'm able to do something in life, okay? So I mean, so I'm saying, because some folks, they could be all the way blind and not be able to see nothing at all. So, I mean, some folks could be all the way blind and not be able to see nothing at all. We see our cover, right? So, that's one thing I have learned is to be grateful. You see what I mean? So, you just have a little bit of something in life, you know, teaches you to be grateful for what you have, okay? And not be looking for more. Just be thankful for what God has blessed you with. You see what I mean? So, that's why I say, yeah, I do believe that visually impaired people have a hard time making friends and they have a hard time finding a spouse or they have a hard time having a social life because, <clears throat> see, what do you think about it as I wrap this video up and close here? I hope it's making sense to you. Your eyes are like a window, right? Your eyes are like a light, right? Windows to your soul, right? See, when you have no vision at all, or you visually impaired, you like 20 over 200, or less than 200, I believe, if I'm wrong, correct me. See, if you have that number, it could be hard to see if somebody's like standing somewhere waving at you, wanting you to come over or saying, hey, you want to come over and talk to me? So, I mean, I just want to make this point. You know, I just thought about this going as long as the Lord wants me to, okay? I was on a brace before some vital points there. You know, <clears throat> you know, back when I was in school, right? I had some uh, you know, ladies uh, that were sitting at the table, right? Or sometimes some fellows have been sitting over at the table. And if I was sitting by myself, they'll walk over and, and ask me, Do I want to come sit with them? I say, Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll come sit with them. See, the thing of it is, you know, they gave me some invites. You know, and, you know, waving, or they may have looked at me and I didn't catch it because I can't see them real well to catch it. But they made an effort to come over and see, do I want to come over and sit with them? So, I mean, see my point I'm making? They made an effort to come over there and see if I wanted to come over there with them, okay? So I won't be sitting by myself. So, I mean, but my friend that I had at the time, he graduated a year earlier than I did. And so I just got so used to uh, sitting in my own 
usual table, you know what I mean? That's because I used to sit in my own usual spot. My friends in front of me, and I just sit there just chilling. <laughs> well, sit there just talking. <clears throat> but, but, uh, but there's ladies over there at the other table. They was more like way on the other side of the room about it, pretty much. But they made an effort to say, hey, you want to come sit with us? They didn't want to see me be left out, okay? You see my point? So that's the thing. When you see somebody that has a visual impairment problem, see, the thing of it is, when, with the way my eyes look, yeah, you could tell that I have a visual impairment, okay? You could tell that. Well, I'll shut up with that with the way they look. So I mean. Versus some people, okay? Their eyes don't look like that, okay? By looking at them in the distance. You know, so I have some of the people on YouTube that said, you know, doing videos about being visually impaired or being blind at all in general. You know, you can look at their eyes and say, you know, their eyes don't look like a normal blind person's eyes or a normal visually impaired person's eyes, okay? So, I mean, because they don't fit the stereotypical visually impaired person stand standards, okay? If that makes sense to you. See, I, I fit that standards, you know what I mean? So, that's the reason why most people say, Hey, you want to come over or something like that? You said I'll come from, right? But had I had perfect eyes, you know, perfect looking eyes, you know, they probably wouldn't have, you know, been so offered it to walk over and ask me, hey, you want to come sit with us? You said I'm saying, right? But like I can say, <clears throat> you know, when you make that effort, I mean, like I can say that person has, you know, right to say yes or no. I mean, some people, they may just want to sit alone. There was some times, you know, I was like, yeah, I appreciate the offer. I'm going to sit right here for now, okay? But I'll be back over there with you, okay? That's where I come from, right? But like I say, you just sometimes just got to make that effort, okay? But oftentimes, yes, you know, visually impaired people do have a hard time making friends. You know, let me just say this. You know, you know, I was born like this, okay? You know, I was uh, born, born all the way blind, wasn't supposed to see nothing at all, talk or do nothing, right? So six months later, you know, my parents prayed and grandparents prayed and they had faith and I received my sight. So I got, you know, low vision, okay? And I'm thankful for it because I never got mad at God or anything like that. Never blamed God for being born this way, you know what I'm saying? I never blamed God for not having perfect eyesight like everybody else does, okay? So I mean... So that's one thing too, you know, when you reach it out to other fellows, special needs people, right? You got to, um, you know, be ready for some of those folks to be like, well, why did God do this if he loves me so much? And so, I mean, you got to be, you got to be mindful of that, okay? You got to be mindful of that. Because there are some people out there with that attitude, okay? And I understand that. But like I say, <clears throat> now, I never blame God for that, okay? So, I mean, I just thank God that you know, I made some friends, you know, at school and I talked to them, you know, you just had a great time, you know what I'm saying? Let me just say this is Ed for real. Yes, it did suck seeing everybody else get a driver's license so I couldn't, okay? But I still took driver's ed just to see what the signs are about. And somebody's uh, saying, okay, red means go. I'll be like, hold on, bro. Red means stop. Don't go. And so I mean, what yield means traffic crossing, all the other stuff. I learned all those bells and whistles. Though I'm not able to drive, you know what I mean? But it did sort of suck it away, but it didn't let it bother me. You know, to see everybody else, you know, able to get a driver's license except for this fellow right here, you know what I mean? So I mean. But I'm thankful that I did have some friends that did take the place, okay? That's a blessing right there in itself. So that made me feel better than you saw I come from, right? Because like I could say, that, in that situation, yeah, it, it, it could be easy for somebody to be like, why is everybody else going to drive so that's the night king? So I mean, so I'm saying, right? So that's why I say, when some people that's got uh, good driver's license, they got good eyesight to see, shoot, I'd be, I'd be uh, cruising everywhere, okay? <laughs> and so I'm saying, I'd be mean, just going everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Just uh, Praise the God for the fact that I'm able to drive. You know, I mean, the simplest thing in life is about to put those keys in the initial switch and just pull the reverse back and just back up where you're going to go and put your car in neutral or just go forward. 
And then next thing you know, you just go where you want to go. Well, I've been asking about it, wait on somebody, okay? You know what I mean? And this seems that like most time, most folks that's got good perfect vision, right? They forget how truly blessed they are to be able to get in that car and go where they want to, or get that truck to go where they want to, right? So I mean, right? But like I say, when you live in a place that don't have much of a social event, you're pretty much limited. I mean, unless you go on social media, I mean, that'd be about the only way. I mean, God did bless us with that. But like I say, but social media will be about the only option you have, okay? So, I mean, you know, most folks want to know what it's like for a visually impaired person. Well, I'm telling you. I mean, so is those other people on YouTube doing the same thing I'm doing. So, I mean, if you want to learn about a person, you, you sit and listen to them what they got to say, okay? <clears throat> but like I say, <clears throat> my eyes are like a video camera that's not zoomed in on one particular eye I'm in the room, Okay. So you can take a video camera, right, and zoom it out, and you're not you're not focused on one particular thing. Is the best way I know to explain it, okay? But when you push that zoom in, right, you can see things a lot more better, right? So I mean, that's the best way I know to explain it, okay? So I mean, when people ask me what's my vision like, that's the best way I know to explain it. Because that's the only simple way I know, okay? <laughs> I mean, it's like a video camera. You got it zoomed out. I got it zoomed out. Video cameras not zoomed in, okay? Because I could, I could pretty much zoom that in and be zoomed in on my face right there if I wanted to be. So I mean, so my point. I mean, that's the only as simplest way I know to, to explain that, okay? You saw where I come from, but everybody else has had visually impairment problems. I mean, that, theirs is different, okay? You know, everybody has different. Um, visually impairments okay but some people had the same ones but then again some people just had different ones okay so i mean but like i say i mean to me it's a blessing about walk around stores while they can okay it's a blessing you know like a morning to go to starbucks you know give it give us a coffee at the harris teeters walk around and do a little grocery shop and sip of the coffee you know what i'm saying so i mean right <laughs> that's a blessing okay you know let's get that Two dollar coffee with milk and sugar, then I'm all good. <laughs> I made my own coffee, you know what I mean? <laughs> but like I say, it's just all in your attitude, okay? It's all in your attitude how your life turns out. I mean, so I can sit and preach that to the cows come on, but people gotta be willing to accept that, okay? So I mean I could say that Till I'm blue in my face, right? But people had to accept it, they had to be willing to accept it. But then again, some people just goes in one ear, not the other, okay? But then again, you know, I have some people that say, hey, to me, I was a passing them by, you know what I'm saying? See, the thing of it is, I mean, they'll have to get the, uh, probably about, so what is that, about close to eight feet from me and sit their eyes are looking directly at me, okay? So I mean, but when they get, closer to 15 feet away, the only way I know if, if their head is turned towards me, now, the other head is turned towards me, but that doesn't mean their eyes are turned towards me, okay? Or they don't mean it's looking straight at me. So I mean, so I'm saying, I mean, you know, 15 feet, you know, anything above eight feet, I mean, the best way for me to give you the direct measurements is to give you a ruler so you can back up and tell you how far I can see your eyes, okay? That's the best way. But like I say, you know, when I, six feet, yeah, but I can see those eyes real good, okay? But further than that, I mean, that's a different story, okay? But like I say, see, that's the reason why I said what I said at the beginning, okay? When a person's visually impaired, they have a hard time looking across the room and seeing if somebody wants them to come speak to them, okay? You know, I hear people with good vision talk about, you know, you talk with your eyes, okay? See, people like me, <laughs> I have to be pretty doggone close to know what your eyes are telling me, okay? <laughs> and I have seen some eyes like that before, too. Don't get me wrong, but I'll be honest. You had to be pretty darn close, okay? <laughs> you might not right beside me here to see your eyes real well. <laughs> it's all I mean, right? I mean, some eyes can be deceiving, you know what I mean? Some eyes can be a different story. 
That's being honest, okay? But that's being honest and for real. I mean, see, that's the thing about it. When you're visually impaired, I mean, that'd be, <laughs> I mean, if you, had, if you could talk with your eyes, yeah. But like I say, <laughs> yeah, boy. But like I say, I mean, that's been for real. I mean, when, you, when you're across the room, you don't see somebody's eyes and they want you to move over there so we can come and speak to them. Yeah, you'll miss those cues, okay? I mean, so, I mean, you'll miss that. I mean, unless, um, <clears throat> so like I say, even if they wave in a room, you don't know if they're waving at you or they wave at somebody else, okay? So I mean, right? Because it could be waving at you. You don't want to make yourself look a spectacle walking over to them and then out talking to you. So I mean, right? But that's uh, being honest there. I mean, some people just want, wonder if uh, special needs people, you know, you know, visually impaired people have a hard time making friends. I say, yeah, because the most important part of your body is your eyes, okay? That's your most important point. The most a part, yeah, sorry, important part of your body is your eyes, okay? So, I mean, but like I say, you don't pick up on the social cues on the other side of the room, okay? So, I come from, that's the point. But like I say, if somebody wants to talk to you, you know, they'll walk over and speak to you, okay? They see that your eyes are, you know, visually impaired. I mean, you, they can tell that you got some visual impaired problems. You know, they can just walk over to you and in, introduce themselves to you, okay? So where I come from, right? See, never be afraid to ask a person, you know, what's the matter with your eyes, okay? Never be afraid to ask them that. It's not, it's not asking a person what's wrong with your eyes. It's how you present your question, okay? You never know unless you ask. See, for me, I have a good testimony about mine, okay? You saw me. I wasn't supposed to see nothing at all. So I was saying? So I use that as a testimony. So I tell them about my eyes, but then I give them own testimony too. So I mean, right? <laughs> but like I say, nothing wrong with asking how you, what's, what's wrong with your eyes or why is your eyes look that way. It's how you present your question, okay? That's how you get to know people. So, I mean, that's how you get to know that person is when you take time to get to know what can they see, what can they not see, what kind of stuff they have a hard time seeing. It sounds like it, right? But like I say, you know, when you just take, some people just take the simplest things in life for granted, okay? That makes sense to you. Some people just take the most simplest things in life for granted at times. You see what I mean? See, like I say, I mean, don't be ashamed to walk up there and introduce yourself to somebody that's visually impaired, okay? Because, and don't think that because you waved at them, you gave them some uh, signals to come over and speak to them, meaning that they're rude and snobby. Don't think that because you don't know whether or not they get see you or not. Because not everybody you wave at or give them a signal wants you to come talk to them or a rude person, okay? You got to keep that in mind, too. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, back, you know, when I'm walking around outside or bowling, I'm pretty sure some people might think, that guy on the lawnmower is rude. That guy walking up beyond there is rude. He didn't wave at me as I waved. That's because I couldn't see you. So, I mean, I see the vehicle going on that road. I see the GMC Chevy truck. I see the um, Chevy Blazer. And I see the uh, Honda. Man, I see the uh, Nissan. So, I mean, but I don't see the person inside the car, okay? The only way for me to see the person in the car, I have to get real close to it. So, on a highway, that's a different story, okay? So, I mean, right? Does that make any sense? I mean, I'm pretty sure some people are like, dang, that bro just walking, you know, just walking down the uh, ground, grass there, just walking around there, just listening to his music. He didn't wave at me or do nothing. I waved at him, but it's, that's why I didn't see you. <laughs> if I saw you, I'd wave, you know what I mean? So I got for him, right? I mean, that's the thing you got to understand with visually impaired people, okay? Because, you might wave at them, but they don't mean they see you, okay? So, I mean, especially if you fall for the distance. So, I mean, right? But like I say, <clears throat> I mean, that's just one of the things that's got to keep in mind, okay? Because not everybody that don't wave, they just being rude to you. Some people may not see you because they have a visually impaired problem. You so, I mean, right? But like I say, 
when you make that effort come talk to them, that's a wonderful thing, okay? Because when you make yourself seem available, that's a wonderful thing because you don't know a person unless you go over there and talk to them, okay? You can't build a friendship if you don't give a friendship a chance to be built. You can't find yourself a relationship if you don't give give a chance for a relationship to even be formed. So I'll leave y'all with that. If y'all have any questions or feedback or anything, if this video is helpful in any way, you know, just let me know in the comment section. I'll see you guys back in the next video. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed day. God bless each and every one of y'all.